Hello everyone, myself Dr. Parth Goswami and hope this video will find you all in a good health. So today I am going to teach you one important topic from respiratory pathology that is chronic bronchitis. We have already discussed about emphysema before few months. And now I will teach you chronic bronchitis which is a part of chronic obstructive pulmonary disease, right? COPD consists of emphysema and chronic bronchitis. So we will understand the definition, etiopathogenesis, morphology, clinical feature, complications and MCQ of chronic bronchitis. Alright, so let's begin with the definition. What is chronic bronchitis? What do you mean by chronic bronchitis? So the name itself suggests chronic means it's of long duration disease, right? And bronchitis means inflammation of bronchi. So to label the case as a chronic inflammation of bronchi, the patient needs to have persistent cough with the sputum production for at least three months in a two consecutive years, right? The cough should be for the three month in at least two consecutive years and in the absence of any other identifiable cause. So that is the complete definition of chronic bronchitis. And the main pathogenetic mechanism for the development of chronic inflammation of bronchi is a chronic irritation to the airway. Irritation could be in the form of infection, smoking, industrial exposure, etc. Right? So let's uh, discuss about the etiology of chronic inflammation of bronchi. So the, so the main etiology for the development of chronic bronchitis is irritation to the respiratory tract and the irritation to the respiratory tract mainly caused by smoking. Smoking is a major etiological factor for the development of chronic bronchitis. Now you might have question why. So obviously smoking contain many hazardous substance, substance right? They can impair the cilia function, right? They can damage the cilia of our respiratory tract. So if the cilia is damaged, then the foreign particles like that of bacteria or foreign substance will not be removed from the respiratory tract, right? And so the patient can develop chronic inflammation. The protective function of cilia is lost because of smoking. Smoking affects the macrophage function as well. You know very well that as a medical student, you know very well that macrophage is doing the function of phagocytosis. They remove the bacteria, they remove the dust, they remove the foreign particles. So if the macrophage function is affected, then phagocytosis will not occur. And so there will be chronic inflammation of bronchi. Atmospheric pollution in the form of sulfur dioxide and nitrogen dioxide also can irritate the respiratory tract. Toxic industrial exposure also one of the cause for the irritation of airway. Infection like that of by pneumococci, by adenovirus, right? Uh, any form of infection can damage the respiratory tract. And sometimes the familial and genetic factor play a major role in the development of chronic bronchitis. All right. Now let's understand the pathogenesis of chronic bronchitis formation. Pathogenesis means how the disease occurs. We have discussed this etiological factor, but how they lead to development of chronic bronchitis. So the main pathogenesis is, is obviously this etiological factor. The development is because of all these etiological factors, smoking, dust, cotton, sulfur dioxide, nitrogen dioxide, right, air pollution, etc. So all that etiological factor will lead to irritation to the airway. They will, they will damage the cilia of the airway. And you know very well that whenever there is a damage in our body, the inflammation will occur. It is a systemic response, right? It's, it's a body's complex reaction that will damage whenever there is any injury that will occur whenever there is any damage in the body, right? So because of irritation to the airway, there will be inflammation in the respiratory bronchial mucosa, right? And the inflammation obviously initially in the form of neutrophil, but later on when chronic bronchitis develop, it will be replaced by chronic inflammatory cell, which consists of lymphocyte and macrophage. So that is the main pathogenesis. Now we will understand the pathogenesis in the detail, right? We will divide the pathogenesis into two portions. Pathogenesis of bronchitis involve the large pathway, means they develop, uh, they, uh, you know, they affect the large bronchus, trachea and the large bronchus. And then we will see the pathogenesis of small airway, which consists of small bronchi and the bronchioles, right? 
so uh, let's see first the pathogenesis involved the large airway that is bronchus so because of all etiological factor uh, you know there will be compensatory hypertrophy and hyperplasia of the submucosal gland respiratory mucosa is consist of respiratory tract consist of if we talk about the layer then first we have the mucosa uh, which is having the epithelium right pseudo stratified columnar epithelium below which there is a submucosa so in the submucosa we have the mucus gland so that mucus gland will be hypertrophied and hyperplasia why because you know uh, the respiratory tract is lined by mucus layer they remove the foreign particle bacteria etc so in the irritation to the airway you know body needs to produce more mucus in the respiratory tract to eliminate that agent and whenever there is a inflammation we know very well that in the inflammation there is a increased hyperemia increased vascular permeability right so all these factor will contribute for the development uh, of hypertrophy and hyperplasia of submucosal gland to produce more mucus and you know because of all these etiological factors uh, the particularly neutrophil you know they consist of protease so initially when inflammation is just begin then the protease in the neutrophil uh, protease means in the form of elastase cathepsin histamine interleukin 13 all that will lead to you know damage to the respiratory tract and hyper secretion of mucus ultimately so ultimately there will be more and more mucus production in the chronic bronchitis and because of excessive mucus production there is a productive cough right so the patient is having cough with expectoration and now this particular mechanism is very interesting pathogenesis involving small airway small bronchi and bronchiole see the respiratory mucosa is consist of columnar epithelium right ciliated pseudo stratified columnar epithelium above which we have the goblet cell so here there is an increase in the goblet cell to produce more mucus right mucus gland is atrophied but goblet cell also activated to produce the mucus so there will be ultimately excessive mucus production you know these goblet cell are particularly present in the small airway so they will lead to excessive mucus production and and obviously the bronchioles is having very small diameter so excessive mucus will plug the bronchial lumen and because of that you know bronchial obstruction can develop airway obstruction can be developed and that will ultimately lead to chronic obstructive pulmonary disease and the more even more contributing factor for the development of obstruction is inflammation whenever we have the chronic inflammation uh, you know the ultimately chronic inflammation will subside by fibrosis so because of fibrosis of bronchial wall and excessive mucus production there will be obstruction of respiratory tract and so the patient develop chronic obstructive pulmonary disease and both these above changes large and small airway we can say that it is due to metaplastic response of the irritation to the airway we will see later on what is uh, metaplastic response all right and yes friends uh, obviously the infection also can you know damage the airway so you know the infection can be the cause of damage irritation to the airway and infection obviously affect the ciliary uh, you know cilia function of the respiratory epithelium so there will be defective clearance of the bacteria if cilia is damaged the infection will directly damage the cilia and the epithelium and that's why the chronic inflammation you know can be developed so that was about the etiopathogenesis of chronic bronchitis okay now let's see the morphology of chronic bronchitis usually no one is doing biopsy to diagnose the case of chronic bronchitis it is diagnosed based on the clinical feature right and the spirometry but suppose in the autopsy you know sometime you might find these changes so grossly because of inflammation first we will talk about the gross morphology of the bronchi right so because of inflammation obviously we know the sign of inflammation redness duller tumor right so there will be re increased redness in the mucosa bronchial mucosa so the mucous membrane is red hyperemia there will be swelling which is also a sign of inflammation and there will be edema which is also another sign of inflammation there are uh, you know four sign of inflammation redness uh, you know edema swelling pain etc so here you will have redness swelling and edema and the mucosa is very dusky red and lumen is obviously filled with mucopurulent secretion we have discussed that goblet cell will produce more mucus submucosal gland will also produce the mucus so there will be excessive mucus and sometimes if infection is associated then pus can be there so mucopurulent uh, secretions will be there that is obstructing the bronchi right in the autopsy if you cut the bronch bronchi 
and then you might see that uh, there is a secret reason all right light microscopic appearance of chronic bronchitis the morphology consists of two things grossly and microscopically so in the biopsy microscopically or in the autopsy microscopically uh, you will see a hypertrophy or hyperplasia of submucosal gland in the submucosa there is a presence of mucus gland which will be hypertrophied and hyperplastic obviously it's a chronic disease so there will be chronic inflammation in the mucosa and submucosa particularly there will be presence of lymphocyte plasma cells and the macrophage and fibrosis also can be seen because in the chronic inflammation ultimately there will be fibrosis right the age of chronic inflammation ultimately it will chronic inflammation subside by fibrosis if not treated early so you you will have the chronic inflammation and the fibrosis and there is an increased goblet cell of the surface epithelium which is seen by electron microscopy not in light microscopy usually but in the light microscopy also you can observe increase in the goblet cell right and and this is very interesting you know friends uh, the respiratory epithelium is lined by columnar epithelium which is not uh, you know uh, which cannot withstand the smoking and environmental substances if you are doing excessive smoking if excessive industrial exposure then uh, you know ciliated columnar lining is very fragile they cannot withstand such noxious stimuli to withstand such noxious stimuli you need a strong epithelium and that epithelium is squamous so here the columnar epithelium will be converted into squamous epithelium which is known by the name squamous metaplasia so there will be squamous metaplasia all right so that was about the light microscopic appearance now one important thing in the morphology of bronchitis is a red index which is a very important what do you mean by red index most important so friends the red index is a ratio of thickness of mucus gland see this is the i will show you in the diagram this is the uh, you know uh, light microscopic appearance of respiratory mucosa and submucosa this is the epithelium below which uh, we have the lamina propria and in the submucosa we have the mucus gland so the read index is thickness of mucus gland this is the mucus gland thickness of mucus gland to that of which is divided by to that of you know base of respiratory epithelium up to the inner surface of cartilage so this one so read index is a ratio of thickness of mucus gland layer to the thickness of it is a ratio to the thickness of wall between the base of surface epithelium and inner limit of cartilage normally it is less than 0.4 but in the chronic bronchitis it is increased because we have the mucus gland hypertrophy here you can see that mucus gland is increased here only there if there is few mucus gland but here there are many mucus gland right so read index is increased and in the severe case as we have discussed chronic inflammation will heal by fibrosis and because of fibrosis and mucus there will be obstruction in the bronchiole which is known by the name bronchiolitis obliterans right all right so that was about the read index uh, right this is the most important read index and the bronchiolitis obliterans don't forget it all right now clinical feature so as we have discussed in the chronic bronchitis patient is having chronic cough for three months right for at least uh, you know con continuous for the three month patient is having cough and at least for the two consecutive year so patient will have productive cough with the expectoration with a mucus and mucopurulent secretion right and because of respiratory involvement bronchi involvement there is obstruction in the you know bronchioles and bronchi so there will be dyspnea on exertion and because of obstruction you know alveoli cannot function normally you know the oxygen oxygenation is impaired so because of that hypoxemia patient oxygen saturation in the artery will be fall down and compensatory carbon dioxide will be increased in the blood which can lead to blue discoloration of skin which is known by the name mild cyanosis right which is known by the name cyanosis so because of blue discoloration of skin in some patient it is this disease particular disease known by the name blue blotters and if you do the examination if you put the stethoscope over the chest then ronchi or rels can be heard because of obstruction of the airway right and if you do the spirometry pulmonary function test right if you do the pulmonary function test particularly spirometry then force expiratory volume in one second will be very low and because of which force expiratory volume in one second and force vital capacity 
एफ ई वी वन टू एफ वी सी रेशियो विल बी वेरी लो सो फोर्स एक्सपायरेटरी वॉल्यूम विल बी अफेक्टेड इन द क्रॉनिक ब्रोंकाइटिस नाउ कॉम्प्लिकेशन वॉट विल हैपन इफ यू डोंट ट्रीट द क्रॉनिक ब्रोंकाइटिस सो ऑब्वियसली इफ इट इज नॉट ट्रीटेड देन अल्टीमेटली इट विल लीड टू फुल फ्लैज डेवलपमेंट ऑफ ऑब्स्ट्रक्शन ऑफ द एयरवे क्रॉनिक ऑब्स्ट्रक्टिव पलमनरी डिजीज एंड बिकॉज ऑफ रेस्पिरेटरी अफेक्शन राइट साइडेड हार्ट कैन गेट फेल विच इज नोन बाई द नेम कोर पलमनाले एंड यू नो इन द क्रॉनिक ब्रोंकाइटिस द पेशेंट कैन हैव स्क्वेमस मेटाप्लेसिया विच विल अल्टीमेटली गेट development or development into dysplasia respiratory epithelium ultimately can get dysplastic right uh, atpia and ultimately it can uh, get converted into cancer in few patient so the squamous cell carcinoma can be develop uh, in a few patient ultimately what is the treatment so the treatment include stop the etiological factor stop the smoking right if infection is associated then antibiotic need to be given to open the block uh you know block bronchi and bronchioles to open the obstruction steroid can be given steroid and bronchodilators can be given in the form of nebulization and oxygen therapy is needed if pulmonary oxygen level fall down so that is the treatment now let's see the mcq i hope that uh, your fundamentals now clear about the chronic bronchitis so let's see the 2 to 3 mcqs for the competitive exam So, what will be the spirometry finding of FEV1 to FEC ratio in the COPD? So, as we have discussed, force expiratory volume in one second will be affected. So, it will be very low. So, the answer will be decrease. It will decrease. All of the following are obstructive disease, except which is not obstructive disease. Emphysema, obviously, obstructive disease. Bronchitis, yes, it is the obstructive disease. Asthma. yes it is also the obstructive disease one of the right but interstitial fibrosis interstitial fibrosis is not a obstructive disease it is a restrictive lung disease in which force vital capacity is affected so the answer will be interstitial fibrosis it is not obstructive disease all right this is a case type of mcq problem solving mcq a 42 year old male having the history of smoking presented with a productive cough for many month on spirometry fev1 to fec ratio is decreased on auscultation ronchi is heard what will be your probable diagnosis so obviously the main hint here is fev1 to fec ratio decrease ronchi is heard and the smoking history is present so that is all suggestive of chronic obstructive pulmonary disease either it could be bronchitis or it could be emphysema so the answer is copd all right thank you very much guys this is all about the chronic bronchitis right i hope that your fundamentals clear regarding chronic bronchitis hope you have enjoyed the video sorry it was a somewhat uh, lengthy video thank you very much and see you soon in the next video till then take care and bye, -bye.